Okay, and linked to that, I guess, is is what you feel about the role of class and change in anarchism. It's, it's no doubt that certainly, I think, in, in America, there is a tendency in anarchism, in, in new anarchist thought, to see classes belonging to the past. It, it, it really isn't the most relevant foci, loci of change anymore. And how many um, of those people have worked in your coal mining community? Let's say they were on a factory floor or as a data processor in, the, you know, in industry. I mean, if, you, if those are your jobs, you don't have any problem with class. Right. You yeah. know who gives the bosses and who, takes, who gives the orders and who takes them. Uh, and you know why uh, the capital, you understand the capital concentration that lies behind the choice of those who give the orders and those who take the orders. Now, those are class differences. Uh, often some other domain, you can say, I don't see him, but uh, enter into the real life of people who live and work in society, and I don't think they have much problem discerning class differences and their significance. There's a huge difference between giving orders and taking. Yeah. Yes. And even if it's true that the people who are giving orders are taking them from somewhere else, but that's the nature of totalitarian systems. I mean, the, you know, it's, it's not the top guy gives the orders to the bottom guy. There's levels of transmission through which orders are taken and given, managerial supervision and uh, decision making of various kinds, and that creates a whole variety of class, cl fundamental class differences. And there are plenty of people who just take the orders, mm -hmm. or else, or else mm -hmm. starve. Yeah, no choice. sure, sure. And in fact, we see uh, class issues arising all the time. I mean, take, say, real concrete issues. Like one of the very concrete issues right now is what's called outsourcing. Mm -hmm. What attitude should people take toward outsourcing? And they're conflicting values. I mean, first of all, outsourcing is a very misleading term. Outsourcing is internal to totalitarian institutions. I mean, if GM outsources, that means uh, they are transferring jobs to some to an, uh, to a, uh, a company a firm under their control uh, which is able to escape labor laws environmental constraints and so on and to give them cheap inputs for the next stage of manufacturing but that's all internal to command economies so outsourcing is you know it's kind of like a pretense that's undo the free market or nothing it doesn't it has to do with internal workings of command economies all right should what should our attitude be towards it? I mean, if people here are losing their jobs uh, because you can get uh, a worker at uh, you know 10% of the cost in, say, India or China, should we be for it or against it? Well, you know, there's arguments both ways. And I think all the arguments are highly misleading because they're accepting a framework that we shouldn't accept. Mm. I mean, if you accept the framework that says totalitarian command economies have the right to make these decisions uh, and uh, the, the, the wage levels and working conditions are fixed facts uh, and then we have to make choices within those assumptions well you know then you can make an argument that uh, poor people here ought to lose their jobs to even poorer people somewhere else uh, because that increases you know economic pie and you go through the usual story but why take those assumptions? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, there's there's other ways of dealing with the problem. For example, rich people here, uh, like people like me, for example, you know, who are on top few percent of the income ladder, uh, we could cut back our luxurious lifestyles, uh, pay proper taxes, uh, all sorts of things. And I'm not even talking about Bill Gates. I mean, just you know, people mm -hmm. who are reasonably privileged. Uh, instead of imposing the burden on the poor here uh, and say, well, you poor people have to give up your jobs because even poorer people need them over there, we could say, okay, we rich people uh, will give up some small part of our ludicrous luxury uh, and, you, and it, uh, use it to raise living standards and working conditions elsewhere and to let them have enough capital to develop their own, you know, uh, economy by their own means, and then the issue won't arise. But it's much more convenient to say poor people here ought to pay the burden uh, under the framework of command economy totalitarianism. That's the easy way. 
Mm. Uh, but you know, if you think it through, it's certainly not the only. No, it's not. No. And it, ev almost every social issue you think about, a real one, live one, you know, the ones are right on the table, sure. uh, has these properties. Right. Uh, we we don't have to accept and shouldn't accept the the, the framework of domination of thought and attitude that allows only certain choices to be made. And those choices almost invariably come down to how to put the burden on the poor. Yes. That's class warfare. Yes. You don't, you don't want to call it class, don't use the word, but it's class yes. warfare, yes. even by real nice people like sure. us who think that it's good to help poor workers in China. Yeah. 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 But within a framework of class warfare, which preserves our own privilege and transfers the cost to the poor here. Yeah. And yeah, that's these are Critical. Again, Critical. It's matters of raising consciousness among very decent people, you know, yeah. our friends.